Have you ever thought to yourself, I do not have enough vices in my life? Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to be starting a new series on making a saw vise. And this is one that I've been wanting to make for a long time. Now in the past I've used this particular saw vise and it's a great little one. Um, the problem is it's not that long and so for things like my dovetail saw, it works fairly good and I can get most of the teeth from end to end. But if I want to do something larger like one of my hand saws, then I run into an issue because I have to move it every so often. And uh, it's okay, but I want something bigger. Now in the past when I've had to do the bigger saws, I just have two sticks that I put together, a clamp in the vise, and I sharpen up. And that works absolutely perfectly. There is no problem with that. It is quick, it is simple. Anyone can do it. You just grab two scraps in your shop and you have yourself a saw vise. The two problems with it are number one, it's down a little bit lower and it would be nice if the saw uh, were up a little bit closer to your eyes so you can see them a little bit better. And number two, being here on YouTube, I get a whole lot of comments about, oh, that's horrible. Why would you do that to yourself? Don't use those sticks. Use a saw vise. And, and so just to make everyone quiet, I'll make a saw vise. So for this build, I'm going to have a set of plans available. I'll have a link to those down in the description below. So if you want to follow along and go through this, I'm going to go step by step and take this whole process through and making a saw vise with all the detail needed to complete it. So we'll be going through these plans and making a saw vise exactly as written out here. <laughs> Now I'm going to be using hickory for mine, and hickory is a really nice wood for this because it doesn't have, it, it bends a little bit, but it is a very stiff, solid wood. It's not something that is going to, um, it's not something that's going to be easily deformed like a pine or even something like a cherry is going to be a little bit flexible. Um, so when you're trying to clamp across a large surface or you're pushing on it, it's going to want to bend a little bit. So you're going to want to use something harder. Also, you're probably going to want something with a little bit more closed grained um, a, a maple would be great. Um, a white oak, it tends to be a little bit more of an open, open wood. Um, hickory is a little bit more open grain um, than I would like, but I have a lot of it in stock, and so that's why I'm going to choose it. So anything along that line, ash, hickory, oak, um, maple, there would be a great choice of wood for that. If I had my druthers, I'd probably pick maple, uh, but I don't have enough maple in stock to do that, so hickory will make a, a great substitute for that. Also, hickory will end up being a little bit stronger in the end, um, and so I think that this will make a, a perfect saw vise material. Also, the other reason I'm choosing hickory is I have a good chunk of it in stock, and I have a lot of these pieces left over from uh, making the trim upstairs that are pre-dimensioned from the mill, and I'm going to be making everything off of these dimensions. So all the dimensions I have in here are actually whatever I had in my scrap pile. Um, so if you want to change the dimensions in the plan, feel free. I made, I made it so that it can be very easily flexibly changed. Um, as much as these ones are one inch thick, you can make them probably as thin as about three quarter and still be okay in the strength needed. So now we're going to take a slightly closer look at the plans of this vise. Now basically all this is are two jaw vices that clamp the saw plate in between them and they're tapered out on either end so you can get the handle all the way up next to it. Uh, then this whole structure will be designed to then fit in the end vise of the bench. These stretchers stick out from the face so that when they slide down into the end vise, these stretchers will actually sit on the bench top so that it is always set at the same height every time. That way it's very easy to put in. You can clamp your vise then down on these blocks and below. And then a screw with a nut on one end goes all the way through and can clamp this whole beast together. Also on the bottom there are these spacer blocks that keep the bottom spaced out so that the top meets nice and parallel because you want the very top edge of these jaws to be touching the plate so you get a really nice pressure fit up here. So the very first thing we're going to be working on are these vertical pieces and there's four of these pieces here and they're all identical, it's just mirrored from one side to the other on the back and so we're going to be cutting these out. According to the plans, these boards need to be one foot seven inches long. So what I need to do is actually get myself a good reference surface because the ends of these are actually still left from the chainsaw that cut down the tree. So I want to have a nice true edge on there. So I'm going to take my square, clamp it on, and then make a couple marks here so that I know I can cut this off right here. I don't care where this is. The closer to the end, the better. Um, but if you get it too close, it then becomes hard to cut. So... 
there is my end there. And I'm going to do the same thing on this. Now in this case, I have some saw marks here left from the mill. So I'm probably going to start my line in a little ways so I can get rid of those saw marks. And then also on some of these, there's a few defects in here. Now normally I love these defects. They add texture and color to this. Um, but in this case, I want these boards to be as strong as physically possible. So I'm going to be cutting out some of these defects, uh, making sure that I have a really nice clean surface on here as well. So for cutting these off, I could use the bench hook, uh, but I prefer to actually put them in the vise and cut vertically. The problem is this saw can only cut down so far. So once I get down a little ways, I just have to go down on my knees and finish the cut. Nice clean cut, and I find it to be a little bit faster working the bench hook. And I kind of like the, the freehand feel of working out down here rather than working on the bench hook. But everyone to yourself. So if you prefer it on the bench hook, do that. But give this a try, you might find you like it. So now we've trimmed these all up and I have a nice good true edge on one end of all the boards. So now we can come in here and mark out how long they need to be. Now the jaws on this will actually be 29 inches long or two foot five inches. That may seem really, really long, but my longest, my longest handsaw is ever so slightly smaller than that. And they do make them ever, even longer than that. So 29 inches of blade. So once I have that tick mark in there, I put my knife in that tick mark, slide my square up against the tick mark, up against the knife. That way I know it's precise on. I'll go light, medium, hard. And there's my mark I can go off of. So now I can cut these to length and then come back once I have all of these cut out to what the uh, plans have specified. So now we have most of our pieces dimensioned, our stretchers, the four verticals, and the two jaws. So we kind of get an idea of how big this will end up being when it all goes together. It's, it's not a terribly small thing, but it's not as big as some people originally envisioned. So we're gonna have fun putting this together. So all of these cutoffs you have, save these for later. We're gonna be making the nuts uh, as well as the, the separators out of these. Um, so these scraps will become very useful, um, but we're not gonna get into those until a little later because we want to make sure that those are precisely what we want for the finished project. So next week, we're gonna start working on the joinery for the verticals and maybe get those attached to the jaws. And uh, we'll be working on getting this together. So hopefully this won't take quite as long as the side table, <laughs> but we're gonna have some fun with it. I do also wanna say the plans will be available in metric as well as imperial. Um, although all of the measurements and everything I've made are imperial, um, I'll be trying to include those for those of you who want them. So that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this and do some work on this project. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about Patreon, help out with that, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some behind the scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day.